Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and in this visit to my little shack for a ham shack chat, I'm going to give you a brief, easy tutorial on how to do Morse code, or CW, with the Yaesu FT991A. I'm going to show you some menu functions that you may want to use and some functions that you will want to use. I'm going to discuss connecting a straight key into the key jack, connecting a paddle into the key jack, and connecting an external keyer using the wind keyer USB into the key jack. Start by pressing the menu key. We're going to go to menu item 56. This is your CW break-in type. And your selections here are full or semi. Now I like to use full break-in for QSK, QSK operations where the radio returns to receive immediately after each dit or da so that you can actually hear incoming signals in the spaces between your dits and da's. And it's very useful in a contest or in traffic handling. Semi break-in is where your rig won't return to receive until after a specific amount of time uh, after your last dit or da ends. If you decide to use semi break-in, you need to adjust menu item 57, which is your CW breaking break-in delay or how long your radio will wait until switching to receive after each dit or da. You want to adjust this for your own comfort level, but I would recommend 200 milliseconds uh, or two tenths of a second. Uh, that, that, of course, your mileage may vary. Now we'll talk more about the break-in function in just a little bit. Some of the other menu options you should consider is number 55, which is CW Auto Mode. Uh, the CW Auto Mode uh, will allow you to immediately switch to CW while in SSB mode. Now I have mine set to off because, hey, if I wanted to switch to CW, I can do that using the mode button. Number 59 is the CW frequency display. You can select either direct frequency or pitch offset. I like mine in direct frequency. Uh, basically, with direct frequency, your display will show the same transmit frequency without any offset added. With the pitch offset, it'll show your transmit frequency with your pitch offset pitch set uh, in there. Uh, I prefer using direct frequency. So we'll put that there and enter it. Now, those are the memory selections you can make, you may make. Uh, you can play around with them and it will not affect your output signal. Select your function key and use the forward and back buttons to get to the, the page where it says keyer up here in this uh, upper uh, right hand corner. The keyer function, now I'm, I am going to jump around a bit on the page before moving to an active band to demonstrate a couple of uh, functions that will be useful there. Uh, the keyer function has two selections, on and off. The on and off. If you're using a paddle directly plugged in, you want your keyer function to be on. If you are using a straight key directly plugged in or an external keyer like the wind keyer USB, you want the keyer function to be off. Next to the keyer function uh, and keyer is the pitch function right here. Uh, I have mine set to 800 hertz, 
but you can set it for your own comfort. Using the multi knob. And you just dial in whichever you would rather have. I'll put mine back on 800. Some people like using 650 hertz, 600 hertz, 750 hertz. Some people even prefer using a thousand hertz tone. That selection is all up to you. But remember, uh, you need to remember what you made for that selection as if you want to use a, a computer control, you're going to need to put in what your pitch is. Just below the pitch section is speed. I have mine set right now at 15 words per minute. The speed function is used if you're using a paddle and the internal keyer. Uh, set that at the speed you want to send your code. And the last function is break in. Uh, that's located between the speed and the back key right here. Currently it's turned off. Uh, this toggles on and off every time you hit it. Now it's on, now it's off again. If you want to transmit, uh, the break-in function must be toggled on. I'd like to de demonstrate connecting a straight key into the key jack but I haven't used a straight key probably in 30 years and I don't own one. I dug through uh, my old uh, stuff and could not find one. As I mentioned before, if you want to use a straight key though, you want to have the keyer function turned off and the break in turned on. Uh, you can also plug a paddle directly into the key jack and I'll go ahead and do that right now. This is my paddle right here. I'm going to plug it into the key jack. I'm going to turn the keyer on. Turn break in on. And I'm going to key my paddle. You want to set your speed to a comfortable level and then you'll be ready to transmit Morse code. If you are just learning Morse code, whether it's with a straight key or a paddle, you want to be sure that you do not send faster than you can receive. Just about everyone can send faster than they can receive. I would also recommend not using any kind of decoder like what you might find either on the MFJ website or by using a computer program like DM780. You're not doing yourself any favors this way. Decoders are crutches and only by forcing yourself to concentrate on the code and for your mind to decode what you're hearing will you become adept with the code. And you'll, you'll find your speed increasing with experience. If you dedicate just a bit of time, half hour, 45 minutes, maybe even a full hour every day, you'll find your skill with Morse code increasing rapidly. Now I've added a link to the ARRL Code Practice website, and that'll list all the frequencies, speeds, and times where you can listen in and uh, practice copying code. You can also send code at a speed you're comfortable with, and there are a lot of hams, myself included, who will come back to you at your speed for a nice QSO. If someone is going too fast for you, use the Q code QRS, which is asking the other station to slow it down just a little bit. I've changed the frequency of my FT991A transceiver to a more active band and tuned in for a strong uh, signal QSO. Please note that I have break-in turned off, turned off, so I won't be interrupting a QSO in progress. This is to show you a couple useful functions that you can use while making a CW contact. The first is the ZIN function. 
which is right up here, upper left corner. Uh, this is your zero beat, uh, and it will adjust your transmit frequency uh, with the receiving to the uh, receiving code. So you can listen. You see how it adjusted up a little bit, and uh, the other is spot. Now spot, you press and hold it and it is going to put out your, in my case, 800 hertz to pitch tone. And then you can adjust. And basically you can adjust to match that way. Now that allows you to zero beat. The Zin is an automatic zero beat and Spot provides you a uh, manual zero beat. Finally, you can connect an external keyer to the key jack, and I have done that. My paddle here is connected to the back of the wind keyer, and you want to make sure that the keyer function is off, which it is, and the break-in function is on. Now you can send Morse code using your computer, and uh, we'll, we'll do that now. So you can do it by hand. Okay, and I just sent test D E and D three N. You can also use this through your computer and programs like DM seven eighty, which is part of Ham Radio Deluxe or a lot of contesting software like N1MM or WriteLog, amongst others. <laughs> and that's it, simple, but with enough settings and functions to make it probably more complex than it needs to be. Now, one bone I have to pick with Yesu and the design of the FT-991A, and I mentioned this in a previous video, is the lack of a key input jack on the back of the radio. What's up with that? Just about every manufacturer at every level of radio has key jacks in both the front and the back. At the price point of this radio, it shouldn't, it, 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 the mind wobbles, okay? I don't believe Yesu is lazy or misinformed because many of their other radios do have key jacks in both the front and the back. Now what I do assume is that the de designers just didn't think to add it. Maybe they weren't thinking about the Morse code operators at the time. Well, that's, that's enough of that. Thanks for dropping by my little shack in the corner for a ham shack chat about CW on the FT-991A. Please take a moment to give me a like by popping that thumbs up icon. And please share this content with friends who might be interested in it. Feel free to leave a comment below. I respond to all comments within 24 hours and usually a whole lot faster. As always, at your service. Now, if you'd like to watch more videos about the FT-991A, I'll put a, a couple of them up there on the, on the screen. And just click on them and they'll take you right there. Uh, now, I don't like asking, but if you do want to subscribe, click on my face. <laughs> I'm Tom, ND3N73. I'm out.